Premier sponsorship for On the Record provided by PSENG. Committed to serving customers, strengthening the business community, and investing in New Jersey's future. With major funding provided by New Jersey Carpenter Contractor Trust. When you need carpenters and contractors work, New Jersey works. Online at buildnj.net. Promotional support provided by New Jersey Business Magazine. The magazine of the New Jersey Business and Industry Association. Reporting business news for more than 50 years, reaching over 28,000 businesses statewide. Every so often at On the Record, we like to profile somebody who has had a lifelong impact on New Jersey. That's what we're doing this week. We're in the living room of Bill Faraday in Alamucci. Bill worked in the banking industry for many years, was head of the State Chamber of Commerce for five years, has long been active in the New Jersey political scene, and probably has more grip and grin photos of himself with presidents and governors than anybody you know. Bill, good to see you. Thanks for having us in. Thank you, Michael. It's nice to have you, and welcome to Panther Valley up here in Alamucci, New Jersey. Very pretty. You live in the middle of a golf course. It's beautiful. It's, yeah, it's, it's magnificent. Uh, you're wearing your trademark New Jersey tie. Uh, you've given that tie to presidents and governors, have you? Yes, I have. Did you start? Did you? Was that your idea that tie? Actually, it was uh, the idea of yes. I originally got the first tie from a f- store in South Amboy, and then Bob Fer. I wore it one time, and Bob Ferguson, the president of our bank in Newark, said that. We should have some more ties made up, and you should be able to give them out. He never realized, Michael, that I would not only give one tie out through the course of my career with the bank, I probably gave close to 4,000 ties. I think I have one in the closet somewhere (laughs) myself. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, Let's start in the middle, 1970. You go into the banking industry, and you start what's called government banking. Yes. Yes. and according to your uh, bio, you're the first person to do this in the state of New Jersey and only the fourth in the country. That's, that's, uh, that's correct. Ba- uh, governments didn't need bankers before 1970? Believe it or not, they, they never had anyone to call upon them and keep their funds really straight and give them interest on their money. Before we came along, banks collected a lot of money and uh, – but never gave the local municipalities, the county governments and state government and federal government interest on their money, and we did that. And I started with just myself, and then I had the opportunity to hire Peter Clancy, the late Peter Clancy, well-known businessman in the Newark area. And uh, from there, we started to grow, and I hired such wonderful men as uh, Bob Cassiola, the former head football coach at Princeton, Billy Raftery, the former head basketball coach at Seton Hall University, Jerry Greco, the former mayor of Verona and director of the Board of Chosen Freeholders of Essex County, Chowie Mancuso, the mayor of Hillside, uh, the former mayor, um, Steve Elliott, who I just had lunch with yesterday, uh, the former uh, mayor of Ewing Township. And people say, well, why did you hire... They could see the governmental people I hired because they knew government. But why did you hire people like Bob Cassiola and Billy Raftery? Because they got to know people and people knew them. They brought the business into the bank. We had the experts back at the bank to go out and get the and do the do the legwork. So you were handling accounts for government. You weren't in government relations lobbying the legislature on behalf of the bank. Oh right? no. When I was hired, I came out of a democratic administration of Dick Hughes. I was former deputy commissioner of bank and insurance. And when I was hired by Paul, the late Paul Stillman, chairman of uh, our bank, First National State Bank of New Jersey, it was called then, and Bob Ferguson, uh, the president at that time, at 550 Broad Street in Newark, I was asked if I could get out of active politics. And I said, gentlemen, what you're offering me today, I'll never go into the political life, meaning I will not be a Democrat or Republican, or I will be a nonpartisan. 
And from that day on, I never was active in any uh, form of Democrat or Republican politics. The bank was in Newark. Uh, but you're from Trenton, and you were deputy mayor of Trenton in 1958? Yeah, a uh, wonderful man. Uh, he became, 1956, he became, uh, well, yeah, 1958, he became mayor of the city of Trenton. His name was Arthur J. Holland, the late Arthur J. Holland, and former conference president of the uh, mayors of New Jersey and conference president of the United States Conference of Mayors. And uh, I became his uh, director of of health, recreation, and welfare, and had also a title of deputy mayor. The only time I became mayor is when Mark went on vacation, and that wasn't too often. Uh, he's highly thought of in Trenton and was mayor for twi- uh, two, two different times and one time for nearly 20 years. Yeah, exactly right. Um, and before that, you were a football player, uh, Fair to say, or well, I, I you know I I was I got to watch myself because there might be some old Rutgers men listening, but I did play uh, three years for uh, the late Harvey Harmon, uh, the head coach at Rutgers University, and uh, we had some great teams. I played I played right tackle, and in those years you played offense and defense, and I played with such great standouts as uh, Frank Burns who later became the head coach of Rutgers and uh, made All-East and honorable mention All-American. I played with Bucky Hatchett, who made All-East. He was from Rona, New Jersey. Harvey Grimsley, Hank Pryor, the, the SS twins, we call them, Steve Senko, who just passed on, and Andy Sivis from South River. These were great football players, and uh, uh, we've had, we had some great teams. We, we went out of our league. We lost games to Syracuse and Penn State. They were really top teams. They were pros compared to us little kids. I think I saw something where your nickname was Hunk back then. Now that was Ed Mirror, who you know in the city of Trenton. He was a reporter for the Trentonian his, in his first job, and he nicknamed me Hunk Faraday. And that stuck for many, Did many, oh, many, many years. You like that? No. <laughs> <laughs> that would be a, a compliment today. Oh, today, yes, you're right. Um, first National State Bank, then became First Fidelity Bank, became First Union Bank, became Wachovia Bank, and is now Wells Fargo Bank. Boy, you hit it right on that. I, stu- I studied that, a little bit. That's fantastic. Uh, have we lost anything by having, have we in New Jersey, yes. by having uh, these huge... Uh, holding company banks take us over instead of having a local bank like you used to work for? Yes. When we, when we first got involved in, uh, in the big takeover, uh, we thought that maybe we would lose something. We didn't. We gained because their, the power of their loans grew and grew and grew. So we, uh, we, we really, I think, uh, the big banks added to the banking industry here in New Jersey. Uh, Are you still connected to Wells Fargo? Yeah, believe it or not, I'm still working as a consultant to, it's it's in New Jersey, it's Wachovia, a a Wells Fargo bank. Uh, I'm still uh, working part-time, naturally, in the governmental uh, affairs department. And uh, it's really interesting. That's pretty good. uh, You're almost 84. That's good to still be working. Yeah, right. I have uh, tremendous people uh, in that department today, it's headed by a young lady by the name of Lisa Sharp, who is a fanta- has done a fantastic job in governmental banking uh, here in New Jersey, and such men as uh, uh, Leonard Sullivan, Barry Van Camp, and Barry Van Cat, I should say, just just great people doing a great job. Uh, at some point, you became president of the New Jersey State Chamber of Commerce. Huh? Yes. How did how did that evolve? How did you move from being what you were at First National State Bank to really the chief business spokesman in Trenton for a while? Well, uh, the bank started to uh, uh, change hands as far as Bob Ferguson was concerned. He decided to leave, and he felt that they needed a new president. Fred Westfall, who was a great president for many, many years of the New Jersey State Chamber of Commerce, was retiring. So I was interviewed with a number of other people, and uh, I was fortunate enough to uh, be selected 
as their president. In fact, uh, the Joe Verplank, who just left the chamber, succeeded me as president. Uh, so that's a full-time job. You, le- was, you left the bank. I left the bank to become president of the State Chamber of Commerce, which was in Trenton, New Jersey. It was quite a commute here from Alamucci, New Jersey, but I did it every day. Uh, so you oversaw the chamber train walk to Washington every year, yes? You won't believe it, but I've been on that train probably back when I was deputy commissioner of bank insurance, and uh, I would say Brendan Burns says he has more years, but we have a little fight all the time about that. I think I beat him by one year. He says he beats me by one year as far as the length of time on that trip. But we were very active on that trip. Uh, We always had one of the greatest uh, parties before entertaining our customers and future customers and politicos in Washington, D.C. You're talking about the bank or the chamber? The ba- oh, the, uh, oh, this is when I worked for the bank. Uh-huh. But the chamber itself, uh, I, I was, we really tried to build that up when I was president, and it's, it's really it has taken off. You love New Jersey, don't you? There's no, there's no other state in the nation except New Jersey. Uh, how's New Jersey doing? I think it's doing great, and I think it has done great under some great men. I mean, uh, Brendan Byrne and Tom Kane and uh, Dick Cody and Donnie DiFrancesco and Christy Whitman. I think we've great. And now the new governor. I mean, he's come in and uh, he's uh, really an individual who has definite ideas of how New Jersey should be turned around. And he's trying to do it. And I support him 100%. I think most people do. You left out John Corzine. How was John Oh, Corzine? I apologize to John Corzine. He was fine. He was a good governor. Of course, you know, I worked with these men because for 35 years I was chairman of the governor's tennis tournament. Thanks to Brendan Byrne. He got me involved in the original tournament called the RFK, the Robert F. Kennedy Memorial, after Mr. Kennedy was killed. Uh, Ethel Kennedy, his widow, had a tennis tournament in various states and raised money for the RFK Memorial. And uh, that money went to uh, poor people in the United States. Did you found the governor's – are you the founder of the governor's tennis team? Well, i got to watch myself because uh, uh, Brendan Burns said – would say no. I introduced Bill after the RFK. Mrs. Kennedy decided not to be – not to have it anymore. She got involved in many things. So she gave it up, and Brendan – it was uh, his last year, and Tom Kane came in, and Brendan introduced me to Tom Kane, and he asked me if I would start a tennis tournament for his favorite charity, which was the New Jersey Council on the Arts. So I, I have to give credit for starting this to, to Brendan Byrne and to Tom Kane, but I was the chairman, the first chairman, and the only chairman they ever had. In 35 years, we've raised over probably $3.5 million for, for the all. Council on the Arts. Uh-huh. Unbelievable. I think Byrne and Kane, for a while at least, played tennis against each other even privately, right? Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. And th- th- that's exactly right. And uh, uh, Byrne's uh, partner was Ed Mira. I mentioned him before, but he was a great tennis player. Ed Mira, who you said was a Trentonian reporter, but he would come to be the head of the Mercer County Chamber exactly of Commerce. Exactly right? right. Yeah. That's exactly right. Um, he was the man that got me involved in Resorts International. Tell me the story. Oh, tremendous story. Atlantic City, I, it had to come back. And I remember my father, who was president of New Jersey Board of Realtors years ago, and we used to go down to the old Sean von Haddon Hall. And it was a great city, Atlantic City, when he was... And it was fantastic. What, what era are we talking oh, about? Oh, before World War II. So I was just a kid. So anyway, uh, after that, Atlantic City started to go down after World War II. And I always felt, boy, somehow we have to save that great city. So all of a sudden, uh, Ed Mirror again comes into my life, and he wanted me to meet a man by the name of Jim Crosby, who was chairman of Resorts International in the Bahamas, and he had Paradise Island Casino and Resort. 
Jack Davis, his president, and Steve Norton, his executive vice president, and they came to New Jersey and bought the old shell fund Haddon Hall, and they wanted to turn it into Resorts International Hotel and Casino in Atlantic City. But guess what, Mike? They couldn't get the money. Not one bank, not one insurance company, not one financial institution in the world would give them $11 million. So Even after gambling was authorized? Oh, even, even after gambling was authorized. They, they just couldn't get off the ground. So what happened, I had a meeting with these three men at Pete Lorenzo's restaurant. I'm sorry it's closed now, but in the back room. In Trenton. In Trenton with Ed Mirror and those three men. And uh, I, I heard their story. I thought it was fantastic. I, went, I ran back to the bank the next day and got Mr. Ferguson, our president, Mr. Stillman, at lunch and told him what was happening. I didn't realize at the time because I figured Mr. Stillman would be opposed to it. But uh, he said, I think we should look into it. Bob Ferguson was all gun ho He thought it was fantastic. So uh, I didn't realize that Mr. Stillman was buying a bank in Atlantic City. Elwood Kirkman at the old Boardwalk National Bank, which was, which was then called the First National State Bank of South Jersey. But that's, that's a, we bought that after we gave resorts. But anyway, we investigated resorts for six months, and we made a, a, a proposition that if one of those three men could not get licensed, they had to leave. They all agreed they signed it. And after six months of an intensive investigation, we felt they, we, they would be licensed by this. Intensive ex- investigation by the bank or by, by the state? By the bank. By the bank, by us. We hired some private investigators from Washington, D.C. They did a tremendous job. And after six months, they said, Mr. Crosby, Mr. Davis, Mr. Norton will be licensed. And with that, and we gave them $11 million, and you know what happened then. What happened? Explosion. They had one of the greatest years in the history of gaming in the United States. The first year, and the second year, the third year, the fourth year. The fifth. So the bank made a wise investment. Very much so. And guess what? The bank asked me. I had to leave government banking. I turned it over to, to Jerry Greco. Just I didn't leave it. I, I just turned the reins over to Jerry Greco because they asked me to, and my wife, Sarah Lynn, to go on a mission and talk to every major casino owner, major casino owner in America. So I was in Las Vegas, and I was in Chicago, and I was in Los Angeles. In Los Angeles, uh, naturally, the Hilton Corporation. Baron Hilton, I met with him uh, in... in uh, uh, in, uh, I'm sorry, uh, Las Vegas, I met with Caesars Palace, uh, Terry Lanny. Trying and, to sell them on opening in Atlantic City? In Atlantic City. City. And, and they were all looking at Atlantic City because they saw what Resorts was doing. And they said, boy, they got to come. And S- Caesars and Steve Wynn had a, from, from uh, Golden Nugget, had a big look at Atlantic City, but he decided at the end he didn't want to come. I don't know why. You mentioned Sarah Lynn. Uh, you're one of those guys who, when I see you at a public event around the state, your wife is usually with you. Yeah. You've been married a very long time? Yeah, 50-some years. I think 56 years. She'll kill me. I hope that's right. <laughs> <laughs> and she's from Trenton, too? She's from Trenton. She's a Trentonian, born and raised. Her father was a, a, a medical doctor. And he was uh, with Mercer Hospital on Bellevue Avenue. And I understand from Steve Elliott yesterday at lunch, he told me Mercer Hospital was building a new uh, hospital outside of Trenton, up near Merrill Lynch. Right, up on Route 1, I believe. Okay. Um, And you had how many children? I had three. That's Well, I usually tell this story. If you don't mind, I'll just tell you a quick story. My first child we named Faith, Faith Faraday. Second child we named Hope. Hope Faraday. And the third child we named William F. Faraday the third. Guess what, Michael? No charity for Faraday. <laughs> and we <laughs> never had a little charity. That's cute. Yeah. And you have a grandson who plays professional baseball? Oh, I had three grandsons. They're all great young men. But the oldest, Jack Cuss Jr., 
it's just fantastic. He now plays with the Oakland A's, but he signed for almost a million dollars with the uh, Arizona Diamondbacks. And uh, I asked him for a loan the other day, and he, I said, you're making two and a half million now. Now, could you send, could you give me a loan? He says, geez, uh, grandfather, I have it all invested. <laughs> <laughs> He's a great young man. Uh, you interacted with a lot of presidents of the United States, yes? Oh, yeah. I, well, with the New Jersey tie, uh, I had a habit of, if they came to New Jersey for, you know, like um, when President Ford was here and President Reagan, they were speaking at Republican fundraisers over in the Meadowlands, and I always had the tie in my pocket, and somehow uh, I got to know the Secret Service people, and uh, they uh, uh, would allow me to, to introduce me to the president, and, and they put the tie on. In fact, President Reagan said, oh, boy, you got to have my tie. He gave me his tie. But a man with him said, you can't have it, Mr. Faraday, because we're leaving right after this and going to New York for a television show. We don't want the New Jersey tie on the president. But when he was here, it was fine. Uh, did you have a favorite president or governor, or you don't play that game? I don't play that game, no, and, and I really don't. Uh, I had, I think... You know, you'll say, well, what a politician. I, I th- I, my favorites were all the governors. And my favorites were all How the about, presidents. I think we left McGreevy out of that list. Uh, he belongs in the list. Oh, now. yes. I'm sorry, Jim. Yes, Governor you know, Mc- Kane, I'm sure you said, right? You did oh, say yeah. Kane. Yeah. Go- yeah, yeah. Byrne, Kane, Florio, Whitman, McGreevy, uh, DeFrancesco, McGreevy, Cody, Corzine, Christie. Yeah. You like They're, them all. like them all. I really do. They all had. They all gave something to New Jersey. Uh, they they left an imprint uh, for the for the for the lasting. It'll be lasting here in New Jersey. Each pr- uh, governor. I can't go into detail, but they 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 were sincere and they really worked hard. Every one of them, I think, uh, worked very hard in becoming a good governor and helping New Jersey. You worked for Governor Hughes as Assistant Commissioner of Banking and Insurance. Oh, yeah. People revere him. I didn't know him. Uh, what, what was your impression of him? Well, I, I was a personal friend. My family was. They they went to Blessed Sacrament School with the, my children, Faith, Hope, and Billy, with his children. If Billy had been a girl, would he have been charity? Oh, there, no charity for Faraday. No charity that. for Faraday. Okay, go ahead. I wouldn't dare... Uh, name it child charity. Okay, charity. I'm sorry, I but going interrupt. back with Dick Hughes, we we, we knew each other. We uh, with through our children and so forth. And uh, he he, uh, I guess maybe if uh, I don't like to say he'd be my favorite governor, but because he was so close to our family, he was he was oh he was a fantastic man. He brought you know Jack Kennedy when he was running for president, and I have a big picture upstairs in my. Uh, in the, one of the bedrooms of uh, Bill Faraday holding little Billy Faraday and Jack Kennedy reaching up, shaking his hand you know, on the on a platform right in front of state of the state house. So, how is retirement? We, we're down to our last minute or two. How, how's life now? Life is great. It couldn't be better. I uh, I enjoy things. Uh, I'm on the board of Delta Dental Plan of New Jersey. I'm on the board of AAA, Mid-Atlantic, New Jersey. I'm on the board of the growing stage. Uh, this is one of the uh, pro- I mean, this is one of the things that are with the New Jersey Council of the Arts. It's the growing stage. The, where the growing is that? stage in Neckon, New Jersey. It's the Children's Theater of New Jersey. Uh-huh. So uh, I, I remain active. Do you miss the Trenton scene? Yes. What do you miss? I miss everything. I miss, I miss having lunch uh, with the uh, senators and uh, and assemblymen and commissioners and deputy commissioners and just regular people. I j- I just I just love people and I I love this state as you know. And if it was up to me, I told you Michael many times that uh, you uh, should have been uh, part of of uh, not s- 60 minutes. Yeah. 60 minutes 
you should have been one of those men. You should have been hired. And if I owned CBS, and uh, you would have been on that 60 Minutes show because you have been Mr. New Jersey Television. Thank you, Bill. That's very kind of you. I've been very happy at NJN. Uh, but you've always wanted to promote me to the major leagues. You, you, uh, you do, you, maybe you, in the next lifetime. Right, okay. Right. When we come back, fine. Okay. Thank you very much, Bill Michael. Faraday, thanks right. so much. Thank you. We'll be back with another edition of On the Record next Sunday morning at 9 and 11 and Monday morning at 6.30. For more on New Jersey politics and government, you can catch Reporters Roundtable Sunday mornings at 10 and Friday nights at 7.00. Both programs are available throughout the week at our website, njn.net. Thank you for watching, and thanks again, Bill Faraday. Thank you. Premier sponsorship for On the Record provided by PSENG. Committed to serving customers, strengthening the business community, and investing in New Jersey's future. With major funding provided by New Jersey Carpenter Contractor Trust. When you need carpenters and contractors work, New Jersey works. Online at buildnj.net. Promotional support provided by New Jersey Business Magazine, the magazine of the New Jersey Business and Industry Association, reporting business news for more than 50 years, reaching over 28,000 businesses.